He's alive! Oh my god. Morning. You're surviving? Oh yeah, I'm surviving. <laughs> All right. Disclaimer. Enzo last night sends me a text saying, I haven't been able to stand up for almost a week now, but I've got my feet soaking in cold water. If you want to do the intro for the show, it's now. <laughs> I missed it because I was already fucking conked out. But I'm like, what a fucking legend, man. Jesus Christ, like taking it for the team. I was, I was exact. I was right here where I am now. And I had a basin full of ice and water. I'm like, okay, this is <laughs> quiet now. It's beautiful. Fucking but hell. It helped. Like right now, I it's the swelling went down enough that I slapped the bandage on it. So, right, right. Good. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Sprains are crazy. I've had one big sprain in my life that I remember. I remember well. I was out literally for a week. I couldn't, I felt so useless. I'm like, what the fuck? I sprained it. It's not like I broke a bone. And I've heard of other people, this was, you know, many years ago when I got this sprain, I'm like, ah, whatever, sprain. I'm like, no, man, it's fucking real. (laughs) It's so real. It's crazy. This is sad. This is probably the 15th one in 20 years. Wow, man. I have had it. it You're going to stop kicking small animals, man. That's not helping. (laughs) Yeah, maybe that should be be a sport. Therapy. (laughs) Kick me dogs. MRI, I've done everything. No, there's nothing wrong. I even had the, the head at the time, the head, whatever doctor of the Alouettes. No, uh, you know, really? uh, wow. they, can't, they can't figure it out. It's probably a ligament that's so stretched now that any, because I don't, you don't know, you know how when you sprain it, you're supposed to go sideways. It's not that, just a forward mo- mo- movement and it'll oh, pop. Man. So I think what happened was, is I was adjusting the goddamn solar lights under here. I was on a ladder. And I was just like moving sideways on the ladder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little twinge. I'm like, oh no, please, not that, not that. A but every late. person's got a fucking thing, you know, whether it's in your sciatic or your elbow. Everyone's got a thing that, like, oh, you know, you get that fucking. It's cramping. It's cramping. It's cramping. And I've seen you. I remember, man, when you started to cramp. Like I remember the Enzo face. Like, oh, don't get fucking within 15 feet, or he'll flail you with a table. You know. <laughs> like, oh! Fucking shit, here it comes. Yeah, I still get those stupid craps. Man, they're horrible. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. I appreciate you very much, Enz, and I'm sorry that you're doing this while you're in pain. It sucks. I've been uh, talking to uh, family about you. We're all fucking like sending good vibes, man, which does fuck all. But, <laughs> you know, like, it's we're thinking of you. What, yeah. what you. what you said, you feel useless, you can't do anything. Yeah. yeah. You, no, I can't like go down the stairs and spend time sitting down. Yeah, you play. You can't mix. You can't do fuck all. It's like, oh, I'm going to tell you something that is fucking on my brain since you sent me those tracks. I put it in the behind the scenes there. I played a little snip By the song way, with no name. Should I relearn it, relearn it and send you one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old it is or when you played it last, but <laughs> I'm fucking stoked, man. Song with no name is absolutely my choice of your grab bag of MP3s when you said, <laughs> have your way with it. That's the one that I picked. Fucking amazing, man. It sounds awesome. I don't know where it's going to appear in the 24-hour clock, but with your blessing, man, that's the one. It's all with your lyrics, buddy. It's what you... And then you'll know. Like, yeah. in my head, it's like one of those, fuck you, the fucking bastards. <laughs> fuck it could be the, the, I don't know, the 8 o'clock. <laughs> Is that yeah. death open? Okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm there now, though. Like, I'm at the 7, 8 a.m., so, like, I mean, it's it's there. It's present, so probably, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I don't think I can be patient enough to wait long and longer than that to actually get to it because I want to just jump on the drums, like, now, you know? So <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah, But, but when, but, you're, when your foot's better, because you, you, you'll have lots of work to do on that, so we're going to wait till you're feeling better. Yeah, I, got, I, I know exactly the two guitar lines and the two sounds. I yeah. know exactly if that's the way you want to keep it. The vibe you created is epic and it's in- instantaneous. I mean, like I couldn't even contain myself. So yeah, it's going to be in there for sure. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> it's going to be oh, like Rob. so fun to work on. I have a feeling that it's going to all time well so that you're feeling better. Your foot is <laughs> it's almost healed and we'll have you hopping around like a hobgoblin in no time fucking playing 18,000 right. rhythm guitars on it. I got to go finish Broken. I got to finish the, la- the guitars on that. Yeah. How ironic. <laughs> broken, broken foot. <laughs> broken. Broke. In the meantime, folks, I've always said it. Google search Uncle Fubar's Garage. Get on board because there's fucking stuff happening. Enzo's own stuff, collaborations that we're working on. And who knows, man, 
I mean, there's all kinds of things that are down the pipe. I know you've got like when you're when you're out like this, your mind starts going and you're thinking about things. Right. So I have just waiting for the explosion of creativity. I know it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> Who knows? Know you. You know, though, though, there's a uh, half an album of uh, Tebow music out there. There's uh, a quarter <laughs> of a. Uh, Uncle Fubar, and who knows? Maybe it'll be a Soul Mason thing by the end yeah. of summer. No. Yeah, Enzo's gonna fucking explode on the internet with a fucking incredible <laughs> mind blast of stuff. So stay tuned. Google search Uncle Fubar's garage. Get on board. It's all about the anti-inflammatory drug. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how powerful those medications are, <laughs> the, the content will be that much better. Wicked. Oh wicked. yeah. And because of your advice, like I. You know, I've repeated myself many times. I listened to all the songs in a row and I've completely changed what was going to be song number six. I ousted the original idea that was there, uh, which I hadn't played for you yet. And I've replaced it with a brand new tune. So that's it's it's back. Like, I mean, I'm, uh, it's what's well, it's called uh, morning right now. M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. I will send. I will send. And you will have something to attack and listen to. I, dude, it's a rule now. I don't fucking release anything until you've approved it. So Love you. it's going to happen. Wanna- you know which one I want you to send me again? Uh, by the brook, you know I love it, and I, I whatever. It's yeah. Infinite dreams. Yeah, uh, infamous dreams. Yeah, infamous dreams. Resend me that one. I'm trying to remember. Trying to remember it. All right, all right. I will send it. Absolutely done and done. I have many. I have more mix downs of four ends than I do of master take. <laughs> it's all like four ends, four ends, four ends. <laughs> So, you know, man, I've been like working on this fucking green screen live stuff. Uh, it, it took a major chunk of my time because I had to learn that technology and talking with Sean Boots from the last episode back in the time when we interviewed him helped me sort of formulate some ideas. And so it's coming along and I've managed to reduce the time I spend on green screen and increase the time that I spend back on originals and stuff. So I feel like my schedule is getting back to normal almost, whatever that fuck normal is. Um, so the pub rock... Pub rock live videos are ramping up uh, and I haven't started the acoustic versions yet, but if you're interested, go check out the Twitch channel, Tebow Vision on Twitch, because the repertoire is increasing and I'm almost at the point where I'm going to start being able to take requests. Instead of just playing the five songs that I know, I'm going to be able to say, here, here's like dozens of songs. Pick which one you want to hear. So when I stop intro introing the fucking episodes with ACDC, you'll know that I've increased the repertoire enough (laughs) for people to make requests. And speaking of Twitch, this is my segue because we experimented with some fucking around with trying to make our live stream Friday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern for this new show called T-Bar. We tried earnestly to make it work. We failed miserably and (laughs) at least we got 95% of the way there though. We had it almost working and I think depending on how your foot's feeling and how things go, maybe we'll try something this Friday. And if yeah. not, it'll be next well, Friday, but we have to do a test, right? There's still a yeah, test. We'll do a test. Right. Whenever you can walk more than 15 feet without falling over, then yeah. absolutely. We're going to do it. I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty confident it's going to work this time. So T bar may be starting this Friday. We'll see. And if not guys, it's going to be in another announcement. We're going to be putting special promos just for that. The T bar live Twitch stream every Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's going to be fucking awesome. I know you and I both have some fucking weird ideas of what to do on that, so to stay tuned for. Another thing, before we get into this, I texted you. You were like, in the, you know, this is when you were telling me that you're bathing your feet in cold water, and you're like, oh, fuck that. I wish it, you know, it wasn't hurt so much. You weren't complaining, but I was reading between the lines, and it's rare that you complain about pain, and I know you're not feeling it this week. And then you said, who's next on the show? And I said, Sandy and George. And you're like, the show must go on. I'm going to fucking make it work. You said, there's no way I'm missing the intro for Dolce, for Sandy and George. So tell me what you remember about our interview with these two beautiful people. We barely scratched the surface of that. Right. Two amazing human beings, so, so intelligent, so warm, so full of warmth, and so like honest and just, just amazing. I mean, yeah. You know, George basically, without saying, he lived in a commune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. it, you know, that's, that's <laughs> right, what right. About living in uh, in on uh, in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, crisscrossing Canada and the states, you know. Yeah, and yeah. he's so creative. And, yeah. and Sandy, Mama Fett. You guys are gonna understand why she's Mama Fett. 
unbelievable. And and being there for the creation, basically, of the internet, <laughs> you know, so many Pretty things. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So many things, you know, and we basically talked about their music, but there's so much going on there. Yeah. Got to yeah. have for an episode with them. Got to have one. <laughs> I totally agree. I totally agree. We, like you said, scratch the surface. It's like you, you meet someone who's painting a picture and you talk to them about that. And they're like, yeah, the reason I'm painting this is because I just came off of an epic journey across the fucking planet. Like, what? Yeah. I mean, unbelievable. Just the stories. And I agree. We could totally get into 15 more episodes with them and never exhaust all the things to talk about. So amazing. So amazing. <laughs> you just feel more wholesome being in the presence of these people. They're so perfectly amazing. They're wonderful human beings. So let's get into this episode with Dulce, Sandy, and George right here. Enjoy, guys. Cool. Angelino, 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 Angelino. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Recording, in Recording in progress. Progress. <laughs> Recording in progress. Pizza good, is in progress. Good evening. Good evening, my good man. Oh, Mama so, Fat is here. All right. Every, my goodness. Everyone's on time. I it's, can't wait to hear that story. Hey, oh my goodness, Mama Hi Fat. Guys. Hello, hello. George, hello, guys. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Boy, that was fast and easy. This is so fun. <laughs> Everyone's right on time. This is like oh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. I love we're, it. We're all serious. We're dealing with professionals. It can, I know, it, you know, we're no. creative, serious people that love what we do. And <laughs> it shows. I, I, it I shows. got the half creative part. But <laughs> right, Maybe. Sandy George, I want you to meet my partner in crime, my good old friend Enzo Lucia from also from Montreal. And I'm Paul, you can call me Tebow Paul, whatever you like. We're so honored and joyed to have you guys on our show today, man. This is amazing, really awesome. appreciate truly yeah. awesome. Yeah. No, it's really great for us too because uh, we we just had a feeling you'd be really, really good at your craft, Aww. you guys, because we kind of saw what Thank you, you <laughs> did, and we made a couple of mistakes, didn't we, George? With the uh, well, not you with guys TL. don't make mistakes. What well, are you talking I about? Mean, no. Well, no, we're the ones making. We mistakes. made. There's, that's it. We made mistakes. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. On another Zoom call. Yeah. 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 We we had a a, a radio show uh, from Twitch asked us to be on. Okay. And it, and it was it was a disaster. It was no a disaster. kidding. Really? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that one. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. that yeah, yeah. Sucks. But uh, but yeah, and it's, uh, it just taught me like you know what I got to be careful. And uh, so you know I felt really comfortable with you guys. I mean oh. I, I mean and you thank know, you. Too. <laughs> that means everything. I really appreciate you saying that. You know we both do. We've been we've been like just sort of you know the the energy is growing for both of us we're so we chat every once in a while Enzo and I we're old friends so we talk about everything together you know hey man how you doing what's what's happening this morning and he's like are you ready for Sandy and George I know it's it's still tomorrow night it's gonna be so fun so we've just been really psyched up for this a lot yeah. and leading up to the show You're, you've been in the business so you know yeah. you already have all of this I've had I have, I've done everything wrong and something's wrong <laughs> yeah but that's the key right how how do you learn if you don't do something wrong yeah and- there you go. Yeah, and that's and what attitude. I tell my that's what I tell my youngest all the time. You know, you really? gotta f up if not, right? No, right. but I gotta do it right. Nah, nah, yeah, so right. Enzo, how many kids do you have? I got two boys. How old are they? Uh, my youngest is eleven. He's gonna be twelve in July, and my oldest is sixteen. Wow, yeah. you're working it. You are working it. Yeah, He's parenting every day, man. He's <laughs> adulting <laughs> all the time. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, well, uh, you'll it's, all survive. That's the beauty. <laughs> so I far, so good. My, I don't know if my liver will, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing good so far, buddy. Hang in there, man. We need you. We need you for all kinds of stuff in the next few years. So hold out at least under five or six. Yeah, we'll exactly. see how it goes. <laughs> Well, listen, so, I, I, sorry, I, no, no, go ahead, Sandy, go ahead. I, I just wondered if you guys could give us a little, just, you know, the elevator or whatever you want speech on what you guys, I mean, you know, we kind of see it, but we kind of like to hear like, how close do you live and do you get to work together mm. and what is your dream and what's going on? <clears throat> Wow, this is awesome. Enzo, cool. we're, we're um, totally dealing with a professional here. This is great. We get to help us. scratch the surface, but this is, this is fun. So if you'll indulge me, I'll just kick it off real fast. Enzo and I are both from Montreal, born in Montreal and lived here our whole lives. Um, Enzo and I uh, are musicians and we had an originals band 
around 165 years ago. Uh, and we had so much fun, you know, experiencing the young, youthful musician making all the mistakes, drinking lots of beer and smoking cigarettes and writing, you know, all kinds of songs in the basement of the studio. Um, it never came to fruition, but we had so much fun. Enzo is a, a true gentleman and, uh, and a great leader of people. <laughs> Uh, and even though we parted ways for many, many years, decades went by and Enzo rekindled with me not too long ago, around five years ago and said, you know what, we have all of this old material. Wouldn't it be cool if we just, you know, sort of got back together and hung out again and see what we can do with the music. And so our old originals are sort of like the binding glue that has gotten us back together. And especially in pandemic We've worked together almost daily on all kinds of stuff, starting this podcast, recording new originals and pushing each other to really just be better artists and try and create stuff that we've always dreamed of doing uh, without ever thinking about what we can't do. We always just try and push the envelope as much as possible. The, Enzo, the how did they do? Nugget, you did very well. The little <laughs> thing I would add is that when I went to rekindle all the friendships, it was literally not for music, but for friendship yeah. because I just missed having my brothers around because we were literally like family when we were working together. Yeah. When you spend five days a week, uh, five, six hours in a, in a, I don't know, a 12 by 12 square room, yeah. you know, eyeball <laughs> to eyeball. We, we, the bond that we had was incredible, but being young, you know, there's eagles and things happen. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, Especially the singers. I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's me. Right. Okay. And, right. and the guitar players, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So it was to bring back the friendship. And then, hey, hey they're, they're not totally arthritic. We could still play. Let's yeah, go. Exactly. <laughs> Enzo and I both uh, reached the pinnacle of 50 years old not so long ago, one after the other. And we said, you know what? Life starts at 50. And for us, we are just getting started now. We have the whole world ahead of us. Yeah, and, you uh, do. We're really inspired. And uh, we, we, when we knew we wanted to do something more than just the music, and we thought, let's do a podcast. I think we kind of knew that the fledgling episodes would just be for fun talking with people, but little did we know we would get so much inspiration and draw so much energy from the great people like yourselves that we've discovered online and said, we can actually talk to these people. Oh my goodness. This is fantastic. So you, you got to remember like when, when for us, <laughs> Paul sends an invite. We're like, do you think they're really going to say yes? Do you think they're really going to say yes? My God, they're too big. They're, they're, they're too amazing. To, you know, and we're they're like too powerful. They won't. Yeah, have any yeah, you guys are too much. <laughs> no, but seriously, you know, <laughs> I love you. Thank you for being, and, you know, it was interesting. Booster. You, you mentioned that uh, you said, you know, is this going to be live? I think you had DM'd us, Sandy saying, is, is there a live component to this? As much as we would love to do that, one of the first things that we talked about, Enzo and I, before we started this at the beginning of you know, 2021, we said, we have, we have a couple of factors we have to work around. If we're going to mm. do a podcast, we're going to have to be able to be interrupted. And Enzo, I mean, do you mind yeah, if I you say, can it? Do say, you say it? Go right ahead. All right. So Enzo's oldest son has autism. And so it's basically a question of when will Enzo need to be sort of taken away yeah, from the yeah, call yeah. and say, I got to go. There's an emergency, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So an, an, an amazing young man who has been raised lovingly in an incredible household. Enzo Thanks, and his buddy. wife, Carmi, have been just total shining stars and, you know, inspiration for myself and many other people. But that was one of the things we said, we can't do live. We have to just be ready for anything at any moment. And uh, my ex and I are friends, but we sort of have shared custody. I mean, even though we're, we're best buds, we don't live together. And so the kids are with me half the time and with their mom half the time. So when they're with me, who knows what's going to happen? My two young <laughs> girls could just sort of, hey, you know, and they're like, oh, God, OK, we're going so we to stop the call for a minute. <laughs> we, don't, we don't really have like a schedule. Paul created a schedule where it's like, yeah, we do uh, Mondays and Thursdays. Right. Right. Something like yeah. that. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. it's 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 open, you know, and, and knock on wood. Every time we sit down to do one of these in the week, he's in bed already. Yeah. I just yeah. put him to bed. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. So it's like, oh, it's worked out you? almost every time. <laughs> and okay. uh, just, you know, by luck or by, by, by whatever. He got his shot today. He got his oh, vaccine he, oh, today. Oh, the first got, one yeah. of the yeah. vaccine. Yeah. Right? In yeah. school, they actually, they actually had people go to the school and they did it there. So you weren't there with him? He, he, no, did, he no. did it on I, his own? Yeah, it, it was okay, though, because he, you know, he's been in the same school for like, what, uh, five years now? I and see. So he's comfortable. Same people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He's yeah. good, you right. know? Oh, that's but it so was, nice. So... Mondays are always rough because he doesn't get the, the, the same schedule. So he's tired. He got the shot. 
he, you know, there's the, so I knew it. I'm looking at my wife. I'm like, he's going to go to bed. So he's going to go to bed. So okay. All right. It's time. Let's go. All right. <laughs> it can all be right. an exhausting thing for sure. Getting the shot. Right. So, okay, yeah. 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 Well, mentally too, you know? Yeah, that's true. Well, so I, Paul, I, I, how old are ahead. your children? Uh, te- well, I was going to say 10 and 11. Am I making a mistake here? They're nine yes, and 11, are. nine yeah. and 11. Yeah. <laughs> nine nine and 11. Oh my goodness. No, because yeah. they're for a short time, they're one year apart. And I want to age my oldest faster because she's already in my head. She's 25. She's ready to pay rent. You know, she's, she's ready just to like put a, you somewhere. She's already booking the babysitting gigs for, for with our neighbors. And uh, my nine year old is close behind witnessing all of this stuff saying, well, you know, I'm, I'm ready for a cell phone and a car, too. Let's do it. Come on. Let's get this done. <laughs> so, yes, nine and 11. My young girls, Cassidy. Yeah. And Sam. Yeah. No, you guys are in the in the midst of all this. We, we you know we're past that, of course, uh-huh. and uh, we've lived it. And uh, yeah. It's awesome, but it's busy. Yes. It's so busy. <laughs> I mean, we're busy too, though, but in a different way. We're not, we're, you know, we don't we're, have little people yeah, needing we us. Mostly create our own interruptions. Yeah. <laughs> the best kind. <laughs> yeah. When you're in control of them, that's a different story right there. That's yeah. the best kind, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's just do this today. <laughs> right. <laughs> Listen, we've talked about us more than when we should have. Yeah, Thank you for exactly. inviting that no, intro no, and just uh, I, I getting to know each other a little bit. Thank but you. Uh, we're so thankful for you guys to be on the show. I and know Paul has an itinerary, but I got to know. Yeah, I got to yeah. know right. where it comes from. How did you like? It's beautiful. Leia, Leia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Isn't she wonderful? Gorgeous. This is a yard sign. It's actually a political sign. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> when we had the last presidential election, there were a few people, uh, Democrats, mm-hmm. who put them in their yard. Right. And we have a really dear friend, uh, another artist, and uh, he said that I should have it. And he gave That's it to me. Freaking cool. Isn't that so neat? cool. Yeah. There, there's so much that we could talk to you guys about. And I know we're <laughs> only going to scratch the surface. So we are going to get started. But listen, I mean, Enzo and I not excited for, for many reasons, but not so. I mean, we, we just know that you guys are such interesting, cool people. Uh, we're going to try and stay on course, but the itinerary, like Enzo has alluded to, is just a suggestion. If you guys want to add to it or talk about it, whatever you like, it, you know, feel free, feel free. And we will try not to keep you until uh, well into Friday evening. We'll <laughs> get on with it. Um, sometimes that happens. We're in the same time zone, right? We yeah, are yes, sometimes. That's same right. All, stream. Stream. <laughs> all the same before midnight. I mean, we you know we're going to, you guys are going to kick us out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you don't mind, George, I'd love yeah. to get started asking you a couple of questions. Um, yeah. If, if there's more volume, that would Let be me helpful. See. I'm going to see if there's more volume. Sure. My no hearing problem. is not, it's been sacrificed to power tools. Uh, oh, for yeah. a good cause. For a good cause. No, no, that's okay. Are you I'll sure? just listen. All right. And because the good thing about this is because it's recorded, if there's any blunders along the way, and if I ask a question and you answer something completely different, awesome. That's perfect. I love it. It's okay. Don't worry about anything like that. So I wanted to ask you, George, if you could tell us about young George, some of your finest memories growing up, because I don't know much about where you grew up and yeah. the kind of things that led up to the, obviously the professional things that we'll discuss, but tell us about young George. Well, there, there's a lot of uh, continuity from young George to old George. Uh, and uh, the thread that runs through it all is boats. Uh, I've lived in this general area uh, since I was two. Uh, and that was a long time ago. Uh, and of course, I, I've been away living in other places. Uh, Right. For long stretches, too, including Montreal. No kidding. Well, there were a bunch of us who were living on the west coast of Vancouver Island. Right. Hippies, essentially. Nice. And, uh, and yeah, it hasn't then, changed from what I've heard, but yeah, it hasn't changed. <laughs> we had a lot of uh, projects in mind, and uh, we had to leave the island because the, the Pacific Rim Park was coming in okay and no people were allowed suddenly wow okay so we went to montreal and uh and nothing much came of it but it was still a blast uh we lived in a a, i think it was a five-story building on the corner of 
Rue Saint Paul and Saint Denis. No kidding, right Holy in the old shit. port, man. Old yeah. Montreal. That's beautiful. I used to live around there myself too. It's a gorgeous. It's a gorgeous part of oh, Montreal. Yeah. So much character and yeah. history. There. Wow. Sure. All right. Thank you for indulging us for the Montreal side of the story. I know that's <laughs> so not the most the exciting part of your history, though. You. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Now, in that case, moving to Montreal, but that was short lived, though. You did go back to, I mean, did you go directly back to the West Coast or how did No, you- actually, then, then I came to Michigan and, and I forget everything, but I, I lived on the <laughs> West Coast for quite a while, too. Right. And so it, basically, Michigan for like your whole life, essentially. Yeah, I mean, but essentially, always, you know, coming back here. Now, when you were back in Michigan, um, the experiences, that you were about to go through that led to your, you know, current uh, mainstay with uh, everything that has to do with boats and refurbishing yeah. and architecture. Was there something else before that? What came first? Was it the music or did the music? Well, come the, later? the music, uh, I used to play a lot of music when I was young and then through my sort of middle adulthood, I did very little. And then I managed to saw off a finger in my shop, which uh, cut my guitar playing short. Oh, man. And that's how I ended up playing the mandolin. (laughs) He switched to mandolin. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this is this is like what I've noticed in the Twitch stream. Of course, is is the mandolin. And I see every once in a while there's a guitar in the back. I'm not sure if it's a is it a teleacoustic? It's sort of like that thin like, acoustic electric guitar, or is it is it? Uh, yeah, what's your no, what's your weapon? Everything of I play is a mandolin of right. one sort or another. Yeah, okay, the one looks a lot like a little electric guitar, but. That's the one that I saw. I thought it was maybe yeah. a guitar, but it is a mandolin. Yeah. You have some very cool weapons in your musical arsenal, and it's always yeah. fun to watch. Now, I have to ask this before I forget, because my plan is to ask the same question to Sandy. And so without any prompting, George, you got to tell me, what's your version of the story of how you and Sandy met? Well, it's it's probably close to the same version, because uh, there was a, a mutual friend of ours who... Uh, had, uh, was it a stroke or, uh, uh, but at any rate, uh, older fellow who, uh, had a lot of medical bills. And so people arranged, uh, a benefit at the local, uh, veterans hall. Right. And, uh, and Sandy was there with a group, uh, who got together regularly at this bar that's next door to the house we're in right now. Right. And then I and my brother and his son were there as a separate group. Okay. And the, and Sandy was very instrumental in organizing this, uh, fundraiser. Um, but we were also both playing music and that was the occasion on which we met. Right. I was like, Holy cow. Where did you come from? (laughs) (laughs) Where have you been? And let's get to talking, please. I'm going to ask that same question to you, Sandy. And I can't wait to hear if there's some other gory detail that maybe George (laughs) didn't allude to, but I'll leave it to you to come up with that later on. Um, So George, if I could ask you, I know that I, I think I read this in the about page of your website, for Dolce. And it seems to me, if I'm not mistaken, that your original passion for photography was one of the professional career paths you followed. Mm-hmm. Do you yeah. still, are you still involved in photography? Does that still? Uh, a part on of your occasion, I, I find photography to be a, a, a useful sort of meditative thing to do. I, I really enjoy being out in certain atmospheres and so on. And, uh, and it, and it focuses the mind in a way, but I don't produce a great deal of printed work or anything. I I think removing that professional pressure of having to produce, you know, images on a schedule or by to a specific mandate, I think is really wonderful because then you can just do it purely for pleasure and capture the moment. And you never know when that inspiration is going to strike. So I think that's lovely that photography is a volunteer part of your, of your daily routine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was my major in college, but uh, it's a, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough business. And if you really want to make a living doing it, you're shooting weddings 
and I mm -hmm. have no interest. <laughs> <laughs> You've that's got like, the love of your life like, already. Why take pictures like a, of everybody uh, else, right? No, but you know, it's the same thing. You, you're doing weddings, a gigging band. If they want to make money, you're doing weddings. You're doing that's corporate. It. You're not, you know, playing Bloody at weddings. the bar ain't going to yeah. feed you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. It, it don't pay the mortgage, unfortunately. No. <laughs> All right. So in that case, George, let me ask you, when did photography and illustration give way to your passion for architectural design? And this is leading into, of course, you telling us hopefully about the development or the uh, the seed of the idea of Powell and Chris Planksters, which I love the name, by the way. Yeah. Tongue <laughs> firmly in cheek. I think that's just beautiful. So yeah. tell us how that transformation happened for you. Well, uh, going back to your earlier question about the the young George, I uh, have lived and worked on the water like forever. Right. Uh, including when I was on the West Coast, but uh, always around here. And so I grew up on boats. Uh, what were some of the places in Michigan, if you don't mind my asking, that, you know, sort of spoke to you as far as being able to be close to the water in Michigan? Well, I, I lived right on the water uh, in on what's called Grand Traverse Bay. If you have a picture in your mind of Lake Michigan, up the right-hand side of the lake is a peninsula that comes to a point, the Leelanau Peninsula. Right. And behind that peninsula is Grand Traverse Bay, a bay that's maybe four times the size of San Francisco Bay. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's where I grew up. And I, I would see boats, and I thought, God, how did anybody build this thing? I could understand how you could build a house. <laughs> but a boat was something else. I thought I was going to be an English teacher. I thought I was going to be a photographer, yada, da. But I ended up wanting to build boats, which I did. And which I is awesome, which is yeah. truly I awesome. just, I went and worked at other places and saw how they did it. Lived in Massachusetts for a while, see how they did it there, and then came back and put it together and started building boats. And then was the creation of Powell and Crisp Planksters. Where does the Crisp come from in Powell well, cr and Crisp? Uh, Powell is my last name, and, and there's another fella whose last name was Crisp. And he's since retired, uh, but the name stays. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. an honorable thing. That's very cool yeah. of you. And uh, the branding is persistent. That's good. But I yeah. imagine the products are no yeah. easier to create than they were yeah. back then. It's not a thing that well, gets easier with time. You know, interestingly, <laughs> my whole business has uh, shifted from building boats, and there, there's very little market for smaller custom boats. Right. There's a good market for huge custom yeah. boats. I bet. Um, but fortunately, uh, the opportunity came along to do a restoration of an old Coast Guard boat and I'm on my, I, I don't know, sixth one or something now. Wow. And so it's essentially, it's not boat building, although it's the same skill set, uh, but it's museum restoration. That's that, amazing, though. That I that, do now. That must be so, yeah. you know, like fulfilling. It must Absolutely. Be so cool. <laughs> and so much tougher. I mean, uh, my, my dad was a carpenter. When he was alive, uh, we had a family business growing up. I was a young man learning the ins and outs of building homes and reno you know, renovating and you know, restoring things. And he always maintained, he says, you know, building new construction is easy. Taking something old and matching it is tough because the kitchen floor is a little crooked and you got to make the cabinet look oh, like it yeah. fits with the thing. And I can only imagine that restoration of something as precious as a boat, which is a heck of a lot more complex than a kitchen yeah. or a bathroom. <laughs> it's all of the skills and the trades combined and it's got to float and be seaworthy. And yeah. to make that yeah. historically correct, yeah. I can only imagine the effort yeah. that goes. Yeah, it's that. arduous at times. In the shop right now, there's one a 13 footer, a 26 footer, and a 36 footer, and they're all a hundred years old or more. You don't fit that in your garage. <laughs> so <laughs> you need know, to I, I learn. I learn the old ways of doing things because I have to. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. In order to match yeah. what they did. Absolutely. That's so amazing. I mean, that's, it's a, it's a labor of love for sure. And so it shows that, I mean, for it done, having done it for this long and to be trusted 
uh, to be able to restore these precious, you know, creations from scratch to finish, it shows that people wouldn't just hire anybody to do that, that uh, they, they know that you have a love for this and it's a mm-hmm. passion. And so tell us a little bit, if you don't mind about, is it the surf runner? Did I get the name right? Cause I saw a picture. You did, and I was wondering I don't know if that how was you one of the even names. found out the name because I'm, an, I'm a stalker that I'm, for, I, a I, for all the good reasons. I am a stalker for the, for the cause of good, <laughs> <laughs> but I did manage to sneak a picture and I think it was <clears> maybe a highlight of one of your presentations. And I saw the surf runner. And mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, that was for the finest hour. Is that correct? Yeah, that was the same boat. Uh, it had been <clears throat> used for a while. It was called the surf runner by a guy who was using it as a charter boat. Right. We got the boat and we undid a lot of the things that he had done to the boat and we're bringing it back to life. We had repowered it. And, and so on. And then the owner of the boat, the guy who hired me, had the opportunity to lease the boat to Disney. Awesome. So the boat was functional at that point, although there was a lot of uh, window dressing missing. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, and so they came and picked up the boat and hauled it to Massachusetts for the filming. They had... A, three or four boats that they used in the filming. And this was the only one that they could actually use right in the water. Uh, so it, it went through all that. It came back to us 18 months later, looking completely different from when it left. <laughs> they mangled because it. Because <laughs> there was all this fake stuff right. on it. It was fantastic. You know, all of the so-called movie magic that they did, there would be, <laughs> like old pieces of bronze hardware, you know, ornate hinges or or whatever. And you tap them and they were plastic. (laughs) They were 3d printed. They're made of foam. Isn't it? I know. I I, I have to ask, I mean, and I'm my knowledge of boats and you know, whatever. So the, the, the restorations you're doing, they have to be to what they were a hundred years, like totally. Like, what about powertrain? Like, how, how do you, how does that work? Do you have the to powertrain? Yeah. Well, like- um, that's a good question, and it's a it's an abiding problem uh-huh. uh, because the owner is is right now uh, searching for an engine that would be appropriate for this for ton- nineteen. 19- yeah, right. 09 boat that we're working on it wouldn't be the original engine but it may be one that the coast guard would have repowered it with okay Okay. so that's close enough right uh but it definitely can't be the modern diesel that's in there right now that's amazing and you don't find this stuff on eBay. So there's a lot of treasure hunting that goes on. I bet. In this I bet. Business. And when you find that missing part, you're like, Eureka. Oh my yeah. goodness. We got the sprocket. <laughs> there it is. And unfortunately, it's, I bet you it's not cheap. Uh, <laughs> so he's you know, letting that go. It must right? be insane. I'm I can good. only imagine. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. That is so yeah. wonderful. All right. So my last question for you directly, George, and then I'll, you're off the hook. I promise. Uh, <laughs> but there's one last thing I, I caught that was, I thought was interesting. If rumor has it that you're the chairman of, and I may pronounce this wrong, the Lila now uncaged music committee. Is that right? <laughs> did I get that right? Or did I pronounce it? Did I butcher it? Well, it's, yeah, Leela Na is, is the way most people around here pronounce it. Right. Uh, yeah, the way you pronounce it is probably more The, the Montreal version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Canadians. <laughs> because it was French people who named it. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is, uh, well, in fact, the town that we are in right now, Lake Leela Na, uh, it used to be called Provence, and it was a French settlement. A lot of the people here cool. are French. Very cool. It, it's a curious thing. There are little villages now uh, in a neighboring one that's five miles away from here was settled by Germans. Okay. No uh, one 12 miles up the coast was settled by Norwegians. Oh wow. oh, wow. And they were all in fierce competition with each other. <laughs> you know, I can remember the, I mean, this was 30 years ago, but 
I can remember this woman of German heritage in Sutton's Bay talking one day about the football team and she said, I hate those damn Frenchmen. You know, <laughs> we hear that every day. <laughs> you know? Even though everybody, you know, has been living here for 150 years. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. You know, yeah. That's hilarious. But that's human nature, right? You know? Oh, absolutely. So it's an uh, unfortunate it reality. Yeah, but that's the way it goes. So but how I did forget, you get involved with the uncaged, the uncaged, uh, uncaged music community? Oh, yeah. Right. Un Leland uh, Uncaged. And should we be calling you Chairman George? That's the question. That well, I no, you should beginning. call uh, Sandy Chairwoman. There you go. Uh, because hey. she is the director of the entire festival and Beautiful. so she's she's the main cat herder uh, <laughs> for that thing <laughs> I love it. and, uh, and i work on the uh, music committee right. and that is uh, a pretty integral part of this festival we have five it's a one-day festival we close off the state highway Oh, wow. Through town and for one day. And we have set up five different stages, a couple indoors and the rest outdoors. So cool. And book about 35 acts. Wow. During that day. And so Come my on. committee organizes all that the bookings, the scheduling, the uh, sound equipment, and people. And right, engineering and all that. So for a few weeks of the year, you're stressing out about all of those magic details to make it happen. And then when it's all yeah. done, that's yeah. it. See you next year. Thank you very yeah. much. And our part of it, actually, the festival is the last Saturday of September. Okay. Uh, we start looking at the, the whole band thing in January. I have no yeah. doubt. Yeah. So Takes a book, while. 35. Yeah, there's packs. a great deal of work that goes into this one yeah, day. Yeah. I bet. I bet. It's a mini Woodstock, basically. I mean, you're organizing yeah. a festival yeah. of right. uh, you know, great proportions. It takes a long time. And to get bands to commit and sometimes yeah. plans change and last minute replacements. And yeah, it's a total nightmare. The fact that you're dealing with all of those details yeah. just for yeah. the betterment of the community yeah. and yeah. to bring yeah, attention awesome. to all of these wonderful bands is absolutely marvelous. The, uh, the beauty of it is that this is a tourist economy where we live. Right. And this festival happens after the tourists are gone. It's for the people that live here. That's awesome. For the most part. Right on. Uh, you know, and thousands of people come to this, uh, you know, 500-person village. Right. And, uh, and it's like a reunion. I, I love it. For that. That's so cool. I have a feeling that when things are a little bit back to normal, that's probably a place that I will put on the map as a future. Oh, yeah. I wish I could go and visit, and I will yes. certainly yeah. make it a point. It's not that far, Paul. Check you out can, that festival. That's, that's a drive. I know, we can pull I know. it's a realistic a drive. drive. Yeah. You guys yeah. can come and play. Oh, I've done it <laughs> a few times. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would definitely bring the girls on a road trip for sure. I think that would be a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. You just got to find a place to rent an RV so that we can uh, do glamping. I don't know uh, about oh, if yeah. I can still handle the camping <laughs> part. <laughs> we got it all handled. Don't worry. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. I know that anything that is, you know, controlled by you guys or handled by you guys it's in very good and capable yeah. hands i can tell that right from the start george you're unless you want to do you know extra commentary on what sandy's got to say you're off the official hook of questioning you know i'm going to put the focus now okay. on sandy all right but i'll but you, I'll can, you can i'll correct you as i was going to say right? you can sort of corroborate <laughs> and say no sandy that wasn't right yeah you missed something or i had a girl <laughs> <laughs> so, Sandy, listen, I, I, have, I have a feeling that there's a lot of things that you could uh, tell us about the side stories alone of all of the things. And I discovered so much about you, but we're going to try and get started here with an earnest beginning. Tell us about growing up in California. Ah, well, I think uh, growing up in Southern California was a treat, mainly because I got to experience California as a young person. But I also had the old country with me because my parents were so old when I was born and they're old Belgians. Right. And so we had awesome. that whole thing, too. And they had started their lives in Michigan or they, you know, their their secondary lives. And, and so we had Michigan. 
Belgium and Southern California. Wow. So I was kind of, you know, and, and I was raised by myself. So I had <laughs> a very interesting upbringing, but it was just so filled with love and art and music. So I was That's really amazing. fortunate. That's beautiful. Really? Cool. That's beautiful. The beginnings were just such a lovely place to start with it, all of the support and, uh, and enriched by the idea of art is life and art should be part of your yes. life. How yes. were you introduced to music? And I suppose the accordion, was that the first instrument that yeah, you were introduced to? Yeah, it was. To? Yeah. You cool. know, I had three sisters that were actually gone by the time I was born. They were much older, 21 years old or 17. And- right. Uh, 16. But uh, what happened was my sister married this guy from Michigan who played an accordion. I was born on his birthday, his 25th birthday. (laughs) And he was just a god to me. And my mom says, okay, time for music. What do you want to play? And I go, accordion. That's the one I want. I, you know, I put on this little 12 probably sitting over here is a little 12 bass accordion and um i struggled for a while but at six years old you don't remember how (laughs) hard it was to push and pull and push and and there was a lot going on there i bet yeah but i I never gave it up and i've never played accordion but i know that it's one of the most complicated things as a starting instrument yeah, you know? my sister played. My parents forced my sister to really. Play. Oh, yeah. Were forced. And my, yeah, my par- well, my parents were uh, uh, Italian immigrants, oh, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. So Italian folk music. It's accordion. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. Yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, that's so, yeah, funny. She, so. She used to play. I remember she she was, you know, <laughs> it was big. That thing, man, was yeah. it big? <laughs> yeah, it weighs oh, a ton, and it's unforgiving it's for anyone like who twelve. Doesn't- 13, I think, when she was doing it. Oh, yeah, my God. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, when we started, I was six. So I, was, I started with smaller. But yeah, the as soon as I could, they gave me the 120 bass. The accordion was <laughs> bigger not, than you. I mean, it was, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, oh you know, now I play a Roland and a Roland is a, um, you know, a synthesizer. Right. So it's there's no wooden reeds. And it, uh, uh, <laughs> it, oh, it sounds has all the voices. Right. Okay. So we can cool. really just meld, you know, all of our you know, feelings in, in a saxophone, a clarinet. Yeah. And George has a wonderful way of just bringing that, you know, mandolin alive and so many different techniques. Uh, the accompaniment that you guys produce together is just so magical. And I remember yeah. that first day when I caught your stream, I'm like, where have you guys been my whole life? <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, he, was, every, I mean, he, was, he was telling me about it and he was going <laughs> off the rails. Like, my God, <laughs> This is the okay. best. Send me a link. Let me see it. You know. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, he was so. Oh, thank you. And I remember the. I, I think the first thing, like an idiot, I said, "Hey, who's playing the bass?" And you politely answered, "Oh, I'm playing the bass." And you put the keys in, like there, it's right there. You joker, like come on. <laughs> no, but, no, what do you no. know about accordion? <laughs> but you didn't. You weren't mean at all. Of course not, Sandy. You would never. No, but I mean, I, I felt like, oh, jeez, I'm such a noob. <laughs> no, no. But people that say you know, who's playing bass, they do. They, yeah, they don't know if, yeah, uh, unless perfect. you have first time experience with an accordion, you know. Wow, yes, yeah. thank yeah. you for all coming and storming to my defense. If it was me talking about me, I'd say noob, <laughs> total noob. <laughs> <laughs> had no idea, but it was just so lovely. And just that's when I got addicted immediately to both of your personalities. I went oh. to another stream later that, that same night, and I immediately started hosting your stream on my channel really? on Twitch. And then somebody I was chatting with, I can't remember who, I wish I could tell you the name because obviously they know you and they were checking out my stream like, oh hey they're whole they're hosting all music considered he must be all right <laughs> that was the compliment that i garnered from that other sw- i'm like okay this is like a, i'm in the green room now i'm i'm part yeah, of the club you know right. I'm, I'm okay I, I got my, my green the, ticket you're in the fam <laughs> <laughs> all right so listen i have to ask you now the same question i asked george earlier what is your recollection of how you guys met maybe you know it doesn't have to be a different spin but no right right well i think what i would probably I, I don't know if i could change much but what i think i'd like to add on is the fact that when I first met George, you know, I just came from California. And so I was still getting, I was a single woman and kind of getting my boundaries and understanding where I was. And I'd been here two years and there was just a, you know, there's a, there's a certain thing going on that, you know, there's, I was the new girl in town. And so I made George kind of 
you know, I, I didn't make him, but I just wanted to make sure before I started like hanging out with him. So it took me a little bit of time. So what I want to basically say is what I found out during that time was just mind boggling. What a, she what a get references. What, no, what a great man he is. He <laughs> <laughs> shut up. <laughs> no, no. You guys are I mean, awesome. <laughs> I mean, he is such an amazing man. He's uh, he's so thoughtful in in the way that he lives which i love he's also uh, a perfectionist in his work uh he's really mindful in that he reads constantly and he's a lot of fun and we get to speak that language of music together so important so it's you know so crazy that you know we started playing with other people and then one time he said, you know, he's trying to move in, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we got to play by ourselves. So, OK, so we come over and we play by ourselves. And he goes, nice move, be George. Playing. Yeah, he goes, he goes, we're going to be playing some home concerts. And I just, you know, thought, oh, yeah, all right. You know, but but I, it took me a little bit of time. And we just finished 16 months of home concert yeah we did 500 hours so far <laughs> yeah, over 500 hours on twitch we didn't know it was going to be our home but, <laughs> but so awesome. i guess so the way we met yeah that was really how we met was playing music we were kind of just stopped and we just looked at each other and you know said hello and uh <clears throat> you know kind of started with that and but the 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 whole thing has it came up he asked me out for valentine's day and my son is in japan <clears throat> okay and he says mom do not wear the red dress <laughs> yeah. well, which one did she wear i wore the red dress <laughs> 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 Never yeah, listen to your yeah, sibling it ever. It's yeah, a rule. <laughs> oh man, yeah, but, you know. that, that's hilarious. <laughs> awesome. Well, to great effect. And look at what's become of that amazing, amazing. You know, uh, just um, earnest beginnings and musical humble beginnings, and now just such a great couple. You guys are influencing so many people and showing that love on your live stream and at live shows. I mean, it's just it's wonderful to see. It's wonderful to witness. So, Sandy, tell me about. Um, Teaching in Pico Rivera. Ah, yes. And realizing that you had a choice to make. Mm. Either if you're going to continue teaching, that's one path. But if you really want to follow your creativity and your artistic dreams, mm. that maybe you had to make a change. How, yeah, did, you know, how were you feeling a, when that all happened? Very good question, too. Um, I get interviewed a lot, but that's very thoughtful. Um, you know, my father was like your father, a carpenter, uh, a cabinet maker from Belgium. Right. Oh, wow. And so he um, was an entrepreneur. I mean, they moved from Michigan to California and he bought land and just built homes. And so I was in a home that was self-sufficient because he was always looking to make a, a way to make things happen. And my mom was right beside him. Right. So when I went to college and became, uh, I studied illustration and art and I thought, well, I'll teach, I'll teach. So I went to teach and I realized I, I need to be an artist. I need my own. I, I loved my kids at seventh, eighth and ninth <laughs> graders. I adored it. I, I coached girls athletic association, all the girls sports um, and adored it. The chilling advisor, the, you know, that's why I am. So I, I did all that. And I just realized I went to my principal and he goes, okay, hold on, hold on. Let's take a year's leave of absence and see what happens. So I did. And within a few months, the guy that took my place, it was a rough, rough area. Okay. Um, uh, Pico Rivera is in basically East LA. Okay. So, uh, but the kids loved me and I loved them. So the principal begged me to come back because the guy that took my place, they were eating him alive. Wow. So I went back and I said, June, I'm out of here. I'm moving to San Francisco and I'm putting my shingle up. And that's what I did. That's I, such a hard thing to do, Sandy. I can only imagine those kids that you know knew what they were losing by you going on, but at the same time, most likely being happy for you to pursue your passion. And it could well, not have been yeah. easy for you. Could not have been an easy change. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I was pretty young when I, I was about their age. I was six years older, almost. Something. Wow. Know. Okay. And we're okay. still friends. Some of them. I bet. And, and so it's so cool because mm. the ones that are close to me and I had many students, but there's a few who, you know, say that 
those days with me and were really important to them. And That's boy, lovely. that meant a lot. That yeah. did. I'm really glad yeah. I got to start with teaching. That is something else. And I, I wasn't aware of the, of the nature of, uh, of, you know, the, the neighborhood that Pico Rivera was. And to hear that, it, me, it just says so much about you that, you know, How you're good of a in there you and were. like, I'm going to take <laughs> this challenge and I'm going to make it mine and I'm going to own it and not afraid of responsibility or, you know, overcoming those extra challenges. It's not like yeah. you were just at some fluffy suburban school. You were really going in and making a difference. So amazing, yeah. amazing yeah. upbringing to start. And at such a young age as well. Yeah. yeah. Now I this mean, leads me to my next question oh, about yeah. your creation of Daydream Productions. Oh yeah. And your involvement yeah. with more American graffiti. So yes. here comes the Hollywood yes. aspect yeah, that right. maybe people don't know about. Well, I, I thought I've got to start a, a, design studio and i called it daydream production because jimmy buffett had a song called havana daydreaming (laughs) and i love that song and i thought daydream productions and so i started just you know calling and showing my work to basically people who are putting concerts on entertainment things like that and uh finally it kind of got to uh a point where a friend of a friend knew an editor up at lucas and saw my portfolio and I got offered to do some work on more American graffiti. And that was Lucas's second film. And, you know, and it was really all about sets. So I was doing uh, logo work for the race car. See, this was supposed to be during um, Hate Ashbury, the hippie time. So uh, that's kind of that period. uh, American graffiti was prior. Yes. So, but more American graffiti became more in the seventies. And so I had to redesign the guy that remember keep on trucking that guy, keep on trucking that guy. Art well, Crumb. Uh, Art, yes, yeah. absolutely. So right. They, and as an illustrator, I could draw anything. So, but they had me redraw all those time wow. period, you know, the okay. marijuana leaves, the, all of yeah. posters, everything, you know, they wanted that. So I did that, the cars and all. And then they said, well, we got this character uh, for Star Wars because by then, you know, it was 77. And um, they said, you know, he doesn't say anything. But if you want to, you know, do this, uh, build this costume. Yeah, I said, sure. You know, I'm I'm a starving artist. I mean, I, right. things are going. I'm going to hey. say no. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, you know, George Lucas was George Lucas. It was great. But right. we didn't know he was going to be George Lucas. Oh, yeah. I've done American Graffiti. He's done THX. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it, basically. That's kind and, of it. And, yeah. And you we, know, and yes, he, he had a hit and he's done work with Zotrope and Coppola and all that. But right. yeah, you right. Know? Exactly. That's, and, you know, there was no CGI at the time. No, no. So they were, you know, just Legos flying through the, you know, it was, you know, very different time. And little did you know that you were at the cusp of creating the look of what would become an iconic figure for yeah. decades to come. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's just, when you got the chance to create the look of Yeah, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. And that's yeah. why we affectionately refer to you as Mama Fett. I that's love right. that. Nickname. I'm actually I that's awesome. I, I screwed up. I'm wearing the wrong shirt. I should be wearing his uh his close <laughs> relative I know, I was gonna say, you know what? We I, just I picked the sure. wrong one, you know. Only anyway. thing I could do, Sorry. the best I could do on short notice was sort of bring it <laughs> up <on my> <laughs> <laughs> in actually, honor of that. <laughs> had oh, to be done. So had to be done. Actually, actually, somewhere in, in Michael's room, I still have. Yeah. A bubble the original, fat? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we got it. We've got a uh, a wonderful dancing uh, bubble fet. Uh, <clears throat> what's that song? What's that dance he's uh, doing? Oh God, it's so good. It's a <laughs> maga. No, uh, it's a macarena or something. Or no? it's a guy's name. Um, Parfa, Farfa, Oh, oh, oh I wouldn't know. I'm not we, cool yeah, enough. <laughs> we, we used to use it as a little infill thing. <laughs> yeah, oh, but really? then we got. But it was a. A copyright violation. Yeah. Oh, because really? Because oh, of the music. Man, but but the... you could use him dancing, but you can use the music. <laughs> yeah, Not the mix of music. Make a lot of sense. If only we knew some musicians, Enzo. You got a guy with a studio. Yeah, you can do something, yeah. <laughs> but they, they didn't end up using Boba in the first one. He ended up coming out in the second one. In, in Empire yeah. Strikes Empire. Back. That was right. the second one. Yeah, he right, came right. out and he died. Yeah, but then he came sort back of. to life. He was spit yeah, out. 
He's back. Yeah. Huh? He's back. He <laughs> has his own show showing up soon. That's right. <laughs> Didn't say anything, but he looked good. Yeah. Man, did he look Wonder amazing. Why. Iconic. Iconic. So, no. And all thanks so, to you, Sandy. Yeah. So you did what was what was the influence for that on the design? Well, there were I'm not the only person that had a hand in this, of course. Um George Lucas thought of him. Uh, yeah. wrote of him. Uh, Joe Johnston illustrated him. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, there were and renditions of all kinds of things going on. Right. Right. So by the time I got him, he looked like a 501 um, stormtrooper. He was white, right. plastic, shiny, but it was bubble fat. Okay. Yeah. And then I oh, roughed cool. him up, put layers and layers, braided hair, uh, dyed all kinds of uh, authentic military equipment. So um, cool. So yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. That's the awesome. passion that you put into it, it shows and it's iconic. I mean, it's just, and, and you know, b- thinking back to making it that cool back then before any of this became a thing, you yeah. know, for <laughs> the millions yeah. and millions of people around the world, it just shows, and both of you, the quality that you put into what you do, you know, the caliber of what you do. It's so cool. It's so cool to know people that care, that really care and put in the effort and make it like, this is a masterpiece, regardless of who's going to see it or who's going to hear it. So much, much respect to both of you for the way that you approach all of those creative things. Um, So I have to ask you now, we could talk about that alone all day long, but we got to try and get to (laughs) the, to the, uh, to the next questions. Um, I was curious to know about your motivations behind the launch of the electronic pen. Can you tell oh. us a little bit about that? Yes, yes. Well, the electronic pen came directly after Lucas. Right. And what happened was it was becoming apparent that computer graphics was going to be very important, even though we were not using it at the point that I was with Lucas. And being an entrepreneur, I wasn't interested in going to work for anyone. I wanted to explore for myself. So what I did is I started searching out there what was going on in that world. And I got an opportunity from a company who was looking for somebody who had film background, art background, and teaching background. And they hired me out of a, a number, a lot of people. And I worked for three years for a company called Via Video, which was all computer graphics, $100,000 workstation. Right. It did everything, animations, but it was like, you know, 8-bit system. It was like, yeah. oh my goodness, we the got clunky. a ton out of it. <laughs> yeah, right. but it was like, at, Apple wasn't even doing graphics at the time. No. Right, so, right. So I worked there three years. I went to the president, just like I did my principal, and I said, I got to do this on my own now. Right he goes, all right. He goes, I'll sell it to you for what we paid for. It was a hundred thousand dollar workstation. I got it for $15,000 Nice. with the idea that I would always help them with whatever they needed. And I continued to consult, which was nice because it built my company for and sure. I was able to, and that was the electronic pen, a multimedia company. Good on you. And through that, that was when, uh, that was in 86 and 84. But then as it got older and it became, you know, more of a substantial company, um, I got a call from somebody that said, you got to come over here and see this. It's got your name on it. And it was HTML. It was websites. It was, you know, you know, it was dot gov. Right. No pictures, hardly. Well, there were no pictures, no movies, nothing. <laughs> so I went up there to this dark place with all these guys you know and i saw (laughs) for the first time and i thought you know i couldn't stand print i couldn't stand video because once you do it you always see something you wish you had done differently right but this was always touchable always so i got so excited about it i went back to electronic pen put in copper wire started learning html there was no microsoft there was no any kind of interface at all at that point it was pure raw it was anything got really fun i mean you were there right at the beginning it was really intense and it took months but i started then doing being in silicon valley i was at the right place the right time transaction processing was there where they needed someone like me to build that front beautiful catalog where they had the engine underneath and that's where i got my name from and i started then i merged with a company and then we went public. Good on you. Right so, on. 
Such yeah. a success story. Honestly, like, I mean, nice when does your book come out, you guys? Like, is there anything in the works? I mean, and I, I jokingly say it, but well, you it's called a, Don't Trip on Your Attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You guys are the best, man. Absolutely the best. You, you know what? What's kind of interesting about that, as Sandy was, was, was getting into that on a parallel track, and of course, decades before we ever met. I was in this town called Traverse City, uh, and it's it's a, a metropolitan area of maybe fifty thousand people. Right. And, and I started the first uh, internet service provider. Really. In that town. No way. Yeah. You yeah. guys were meant to be, man. Absolutely <laughs> meant to be. Yeah. That's that's uncanny. Like yeah. that's I really. Know. Isn't that I wild? Mean, yeah, yeah, we're both so, very technical. You know, and that was an intense four or five years. Uh, I eventually had to sell out. I mean, the cable companies made it clear that yeah. I was not going. I was either going to play ball with them or, or yeah. disappear. Wow. But yeah, uh, of course, man, oh man, of I can only but imagine it was how that really was fun, delivered. <laughs> uh, to, you know, because no nobody knew what the internet even was. I mean, this is kind of a rural area, right. and, or anywhere uh, to be able anywhere, to. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I I just enjoyed introducing people to the the whole wide world that way, and a uh, couple of pioneers. Ans honestly, hey, like, I mean, I mean, I remember because I had a friend of mine in high school, and you know. It was, 16 17 and he was into into that this is 87 right and he was already he had just gotten a computer god help yeah. me i don't know what it was i don't remember <laughs> commodore like, 64 86 or, no it was like a 286 maybe? oh no 80 80s is yeah it's probably and a 286, 286. Yeah, he right. could and, have and he had the dial up and he was in on bbs right. and it was like like what what is this exactly <laughs> the guys like i want to make you see T, 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 what the hell? Give me, never mind. Give me the guitar. Let's go drink some beer. Never mind. What? Why? I don't know. Yeah. But now he's out there in Seattle. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he works for either Microsoft or one of the two. I don't yeah, know. I'm sure there's you know, so many. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, but yeah, yeah it's, it's incredible, you know, that. Yeah. It's yeah. such an, a mind. I mean, and the kids today, hey, whatever. They don't have a clue. To think that they to think that they went to the uh, moon in something probably to... as powerful as a cell phone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's just yeah. Come on. You know, there was yeah. like 14 acres of computers to put one rocket into orbit. Yeah, you know? I know. I know. You darn oh. kids never had to do battle with a phone modem. <laughs> you know? Yes. That's a nightmare. That's yeah. that's that's you know, you fall asleep and you <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is that? Oh, it hurts. Yeah, so it's ridiculous. like somebody using AOL these days, and we still have people. That yeah, we know. no, we still have AOL email addresses. Wow, amazing! It's still amazing. around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the difference with George and I, he's an Apple and I'm a PC. Ah, Straight up. there you go. That's okay. Well, hey, best I, of, I, listen, I, combining I, those two worlds is like always in your benefit. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> When one I, I, breaks, the ego switch to the other side carefully to the dark side, whichever was depending on your perspective. Just, right? I don't care. Both, whichever <laughs> works. There's benefits to one. There's benefits to the other, right? Nice hey, nice hi, baby. Hey, hey there oh, he is. Hello. This is Flacco. Oh, gorgeous. Hello. He's got pal. his own cam. I, yeah, I was going to say, I wreck on your Twitch cam. And I think yeah. the first time that I saw your stream, it was just an empty bed. And I thought, oh, well, there's some oh, beautiful animal that probably hangs out there. But he's the oh. manager. He's, he's the, the boss. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I was going to say, he's the muscle. No, no. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, don't mess, under man. Contract. The manager's coming in to get you, right? <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Oh, what a great trio you guys are, man. Yeah. Unbelievable. He, he thinks we're streaming because we're <laughs> sitting here. And he normally gets a treat. At the there you go. Yo, he's like, how come so I haven't been in the stream the for an hour now? Where's here? my Where's my food? That's so funny. If we could send a virtual treat, we would. It would be our pleasure. 
All right. So, Sandy, I want to ask you just one last thing before we get into sort of more current stuff in your Twitch channel and whatnot. Um, I was going to ask you about uh, the motivations behind creation of Travel Talk Radio and also how that ties in with raising awareness about human trafficking. I just Ah. I saw that and I'm like, this is something I have to ask Sandy about. So in your own words, of course, I'd love to hear how that all came about. Yeah, you bet. Well, you know, after I took that ride public, there's a lot of things that happen to you. You don't have to go to work day after day, or you don't have that goal to take something to that next level because you've done it. So you jump off. And I was uh, a, a guest on many radio shows talking about the internet and the internet business, because I had somehow done this and done it well. So I got a call one day. Somebody said, would you like your own radio show? Right, We're cool. starting our, an online radio show. It was 2000 and 2000, right on. Uh, 2001, actually. And um, I said, yeah. You know, at, at that time, I'd had, I had registered a ton of domain names, travel.com, travels.com, tours.com, sightseeing.com, a lot. And even outside of travel. But I thought, gosh, you know, I'd already traveled to uh, destinations talking about the internet to the travel industry. I'll do a travel show and I'll get all the experts to come on my show. That was my idea. And so that's what I did. Uh, Within six months, though, I was on real radio. They Uh kind of just, I just got the opportunity. Right. And then all of a sudden I got a call from Mazatlan saying, would you come here and do a show here? And I go, travel there? Well, yeah, I guess I could do that. I had never thought I would travel doing Travel Talk Radio. Ironically, Uh, isn't that crazy? eh? (laughs) uh Yeah, I thought I would just get the experts in, you know. Well, as it turns out, in 15 years, I've been around the world like six times. I mean, I'm as at home in Africa as I am in China, as in Europe. And so, you know, it's just quite amazing what happened to me after life in the, you know, Silicon Valley, uh, doing something completely different. But it worked out because really and truly communications is the art of, and I'm an artist and that's what you do is you, you're communicating with your art. Why not with what you say? And with that too, I had the opportunity to look at a bigger thing of travel as being a component to peace, as being a component to getting uh, areas uh, a hand up. If you get tourism in an area, well, the roads get better, the parks yeah. get better, everything gets better. So those were the some of the elements. Plus, uh, I had a thing on my radio show that, uh, you know, you extend your hand in friendship, you revere the environment, and you celebrate the diversity. And that's what we always went to. So I was, you know, attracted uh, to or by uh, other agencies that came in and introduced themselves. And one of them was airline ambassadors. Uh, and it was really a woman who started it, a flight attendant. And she would go off and she, instead of going shopping, like most of them do, and she probably had enough of it, she went to orphanages and oh, she man. started seeing, gosh, we need to do some things here. You know, we got some stuff going on. Then she learned about trafficking. And then she realized that the airlines were huge in this. Really? And with the travel in this. Uh, and I had already been uh, appointed by Condoleezza Rice and Michael Chertoff for the Western Travel Initiative in D.C. So I had a foot in D.C. already and spent time doing things with that group. So for me to go on the board and start representing and, and as a teacher, training pilots, uh flight attendants, crew, um, administrators, what the airline could do to to really open up their eyes yeah, and what see to look what for. was happening right in front of them. So that's what I did. And, and I did it for a number of years. But, you know, I, what I did, I started it. And there's a wonderful new blood there. I just kind of slowly backed out of it and blessed it, and <laughs> you know. Gave it your blessing, planted the seed. It's it's a tough thing to do. Uh, People are, when you're talking about this incredible crime against the human race, it 
always brings up something from somebody who saw something and didn't realize it and felt horrible now because they could, and they see their eyes and it, it never fails that somebody comes up or is in the audience and has had a horrible um, situation where they have, you know, seen it and now they realize it. Sandy, yeah. you're freaking amazing. I can Pico Rivera yeah. planting the seed of autonomy and empowerment and just setting the beliefs of young aspiring minds in the right direction. And then going through so many different challenges and, you know, doing travel talk radio and, and just an earnestly saying, I'm going to talk about cool stuff and then ending up planting the seed and, you know, advocating for amnesty and for human rights. What the F man, like, did, yeah. did, and, and to have George here, humble George, soft-spoken, slightly sarcastic George, uh, <laughs> but partner in crime. And I can't think of two better people equipped, you know, to uh, empower each other through all of these amazing things and to come off as just the coolest, most laid back people on the whole planet. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm humbled and honored, you know, to be in your presence uh, and to have you guys tell us all of these incredible stories. You, you guys are amazing. You guys are absolutely yes. amazing. Everyone should know about you guys. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Everyone. Definitely. Um, let's talk about some current stuff today, like modern day stuff here. You guys are setting the bar super high <laughs> on how it's done on Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a lot of crap on Twitch guys. I mean, I, I am just getting into Twitch. I'll be honest. I'm a noob. I'm, I'm brand new at it. I've known about it for years, obviously, but I never really got into it. And I'm just starting, you know, uh, a fledgling channel and trying to experiment and try things and not being afraid of making mistakes. And I'm dragging Enzo along for the ride. I'm like, you too, man, we're going to do this. We're going to make asses of ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> and shamelessly just being jerks online. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but then no, we come perfect. up, we stumble upon your channel and there you guys are. Dolce. Okay. <laughs> oh, a hype train. Oh, you guys, thank you so much. What a beautiful no, Sunday you're giving us. Fuck, I know. Choo choo. Yes. Well, w w <laughs> thank you very much. Really appreciate all your support, everything you do for us. And uh, thank you, thank you, Amy Ann. Thank you for those hundred bits. Venture, and thank you for that heart. Thank you. All right, so thank you. We'll go ahead and uh, do Maria Lena. Thank you so much for everything you're doing, everybody. And don't forget, we have a, uh, we, we do our, what about credits at the end? And we show all your names. It's really fun. And uh, so what prompted you to start a Twitch channel? Let's start with that. Well, one thing is that we were playing live out and, and among the things we did was a weekly, it was just called Taco Tuesday at a large bar in, in the little town of Northport. Right. And we would have friends come, other musicians and uh, and we just set up. Sometimes there would be eight or ten people, you know. Other times maybe four, uh, but we would just sit there and and play music and figure out well what can we do together. And I know this. Do you know that? And blah blah blah. And we just played for drinks and tacos, basically. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, but it ended up the best being, kept secrets in Northeastern America are playing for yeah. tacos. Like, I mean, that's just awesome. <laughs> it ended up being, it was on a Tuesday night. It ended up being their biggest night of the week. <laughs> love it. Love because it. Because everybody showed up because <laughs> it was so fun. And awesome. so we, we were instrumental in organizing that and then the pandemic hit right and so you know aside from not having paid gigs that was the one that we really missed you know yeah. was just the getting out there in front of people and, and sandy did some research 
Uh, and yeah, I read and, an article. Of course, she was a little more familiar with Twitch having, she has a boy. I've got a couple of girls uh, and he was a gamer yeah. or yeah. is a gamer, I should yeah. say. Yeah. So, so I had been on Twitch, uh, but, you know, watched him. Yeah. And, and yeah, so, so it was not new for me, but the whole, I, I didn't even put it together with the music thing until I read an article in February. Right. And it, cause we were ready to go to California to do some gigging all the way up the coast. Yeah. Okay. And, it all figured out. Yeah. We got the van, we had everything <laughs> Nice. of any case. So as it turns out, uh, I, I flipped the switch with this whole thing, started learning, you know, OBS stream labs, pulling that all together. There you go. And I like technology. I mean, a radio person, you got to do your own thing anyway, a lot of times. Yeah. So it wasn't crazy, uh, but we got a lot of new stuff, put it out there. And uh, by May, um, I, you know, we just said, yeah, let's just do it. So I put the, I put the, uh, the, the <laughs> cell phone <laughs> on George and I said, uh, play, play something. something. <laughs> yeah. So we got, two, we got two, we got two, two people there and I go, Oh my God, this is awesome. <laughs> this could be just like Taco Tuesdays, only yeah. there's a, maybe some potential like to branch out people, past yeah. the borders of every country you've ever, yeah. well, that you've already visited, Sandy, because you've yeah, already well, been around the world. But yeah, yeah but we, we had already done Facebook, you know, at some of our paying gigs, you know, we, so we had been doing live or, you know, some streaming, but not on right. Twitch. Right. So that's how we really started. And I, I have to say that our first real stream, we got rated by 350 people. Awesome. awesome. Cool. That's so fun. And the best. We did not. Yeah. We were deer in the headlights. We knew. <laughs> what is this? Yeah. Someone's rating. Is this a good thing or Just a bad thing? All right? of a sudden, the <laughs> chat. Just like sidebars going by in a blur. Yeah, it was like, what was? <laughs> yeah, we thought something was wrong, you know. <laughs> and uh, did we break something? Right. <laughs> yeah, and we had no moderators, nothing. Right. right. So it was just. You know, so but anyway, that got us to affiliate pretty fast. That's fantastic. And we got pretty lucky, and uh, yeah, we got I don't know really if luck. Lucky. I mean, lucky. I I believe a little bit, but I also have a feeling that it's a lot more than just luck. I mean, uh, yeah, like can, talent and yeah, work, talent, personality, and talent charisma, and work and generosity, <laughs> compassion, yeah, you know. politeness, <laughs> you professionalism. Guys, just a couple of other here? words. That come we've got, a, we've got an upstairs for both of you. All your families are welcome here. <laughs> you can't adopt to, us. We're adopting you first. That's the way paraphrase another famous character. There's no such thing as luck. <laughs> Right, right. It's opportunity meeting preparedness. I do believe that. I really do. And that's the way we sort of live. We really do. We try to see everything that we can and see if there's a fit for us or someone we might know. And yeah, that's cool. kind of been a great way to just kind of move around. But, uh I love the way you described it. it, deer in headlights, because that <laughs> happened to Paul too yeah. on his one of his first ones. Yeah. And and he goes on and he, he makes a video explaining it. And I'm like, I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> what do you mean you got raided? What the fuck? The cops showed up? What, is what that is a bad about? thing? Like who did I'm what gonna kill his wife? Go who's <laughs> who's, who's, hide, who's trying to fight you? Come on. <laughs> and just no storming clue, to my rescue, you know. <laughs> Big brother. Like on the you, way. for me, Twitch was for gamers. I had yeah. no idea yeah. that all this yeah. this whole culture was going on on this and, and then he's like no explain me wow yeah uh, well, much like tiktok i mean tiktok to me at the beginning of pandemic enzo and i both were like just you know amazed like wow oh, look yeah. at all of this crazy stuff people are doing and then you, you know you scroll through a whole bunch of people sorry doing shuffle do you dancing remember and whatnot, wait but, a second wait a what? second do you remember when it started yeah. remember when the lockdown the pandemic first hit paul and we were seeing Everybody's dragging out their instruments. Everybody, yeah. every clown who ever had an acoustic guitar <laughs> now <laughs> playing live. Right. Yeah. I go, Paul. He goes, No, no, I'm backing off. I'm not doing nothing until this thing goes away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be a drop in the bucket. I don't want to. Yeah, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. And no I was way. like, uh, Okay. They, okay. <laughs> I'm not doing nothing. And then, then, you know, like almost two years later, here we are. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Here we are in this There's, incredible community, too. Isn't it, it wonderful? Is, it is an amazing it's, community, isn't yeah. it? There's so oh, yeah. much. We, we I, talk I mean, about this all a, the time. Uh, just gobsmack me. <laughs> it's uh, a good word for it. Yeah. It is perfect. The, I think uh, it's lovely. And, I think it's lovely. You know, we have people, you know, who we think of as fast friends 
who we've never we don't even know what they look like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You recognize yeah. them from a little icon of their picture. They're <laughs> there with us every time we're on. Yeah. 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 And and then a lot of times we'll go somewhere else and there it's like a little crowd of people bar hopping or something. Yeah. Right. That's you know, because perfect, we go over to Sim Caesar's stream where metaphor. he's flying yeah. airplanes. And yeah. <laughs> Lo and behold, there's, you know, three or four people that were just on our stream. Over Absolutely. There. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's a lovely thing. And the, the sense of community, I mean, and we've alluded to this in other episodes where we said, you know, we have uh, our old Facebook friends, you know, a Facebook that's been around for almost 15 years now. And everyone was on Facebook at the beginning. And now you got 500 friends and you you don't even know them anymore. Like, who the hell are <laughs> these people? So it's like a, almost a thousand people that you'd rather not even hang out with ever. And they're <laughs> friends on Facebook. Right. And there's thousands of strangers on TikTok and on Twitch that are like closer than all of those friends <laughs> yeah, combined. And right. You would want to hang out with them. Like if there was a virtual party, I want to go. I want to be there because oh, yeah. I want to hang out with all of these it's, awesome people. You guys it's included. Yeah. It's, it's just so fun to be able to feel like you're closer to these strangers than you are to yeah. some of your oldest friends. Yeah. Isn't it ridiculous? Yeah. It's so yeah, strange. It but remarkable. it's true. It is the way it is. I, uh, I, I think one thing that we, we, we really realize too is because some of these streams are so like we call it the after hours we just go and just hang <laughs> out and drink yeah. beer and just laugh and have so much fun but you know it's you know we play music but our moderators our moderators are our producers they are our heart because they set the tone Right. And and that that chat that's going on has nothing to do with us. It's all about what they're doing. And and then when we come back, OK, we're back. But I mean, it's just I love it so much how they just have this community. Yeah, so let's talk about that for a minute, Sandy. How did you go about choosing moderators? That's a I mean, a, a brand a new perfect, world. For me. Yeah. I would love to hear about how you went. about. Yes. That. Well, it's an interesting because I didn't even understand the the idea of a moderator and if I needed a moderator, if, I didn't even understand that. Right. But then somebody said, well, I'll moderate for you. And I said, yeah, OK. <laughs> and uh, I didn't really know what that meant. And then somebody said, well, Amy Ann, who's our mod squad leader, okay. Amy Ann said she would do it. And I said, gee, that would be great. Well, then this other person who was in the middle, I mean, a way far away and the time zone just never was going to work. Right. So, and they bought out wonderfully. And so Amy Ann came on. And so I think what, what to look for is somebody who's at your stream a lot and doesn't have a, doesn't have their own stream. Right. Right. Cause that, it is a lot of work. They're not able to necessarily just, you know, enjoy as much as others would. There's, there's a lot of responsibility involved, keeping trolls out, keeping negative commentary, sometimes harassing comments, mm -hmm. all yeah. that kind of stuff. So well, it they, is a full on responsibility. Their, yeah. They got their mod view. So their mod view is in front of them. So they can see things pretty quickly, what they need to do. Right. And then, you know, we set up all of our, I mean, I'm pretty proactive. So I've got things really pretty much installed for them. You how know to do shout mean? outs, how to do, you know, like uh, the yeah, socials we, and how to find requests and, and whatnot. Sure. Yeah, we, we, those are all been done for quite a while. But, you know, that took time. Right. Everything took time. And mm -hmm. you know what? I think the best thing to do is just not be in a hurry. Just just do it at your own your maturation. Do it at your own speed. You know, it, it's it's better that way because then you'll enjoy it and you won't burn out. I think yeah, that's important to mention that because creating amazing. content it's, at a crazy easy to pace. bite off a little too much too. Yeah, you can and really then take a end up live sometime in a total panic. Yeah, and that is no fun at all. Oh. No. You guys could yeah. write the book of so many things. Yeah, the 101 on pretty much anything you want to know about could definitely be authored and produced by you guys. But <laughs> I just love that you've chosen to share yourselves and your in your element and in, in at home and even on the road too, if I'm not mistaken, you, you took some time to go somewhere and then you streamed from a remote location. Is that oh, true? Yeah. Well, well, we have two houses. Yeah. Right. Uh, and you streamed from Studio B, I think, is one of, yeah, one of the streams right. that Studio I caught. I'm like, that's, that's so it. cool. The cabin. Look, they're at the cottage, the cabin. Yeah, there you go. The cabin. <laughs> right in awesome. front of George's bookshelf. 
Oh, I love it. I love and it. Dabbler, so he just wants to be in the bookshelf. That's what he wants to do. <laughs> That's so fun. So I think fun. you'd love Dabbler. You guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, you guys are going to do well. And I think I would love to see you do what you're doing here. This is really cool. And you do it in such a good way. You're so kind. Well, thank you. Thank you. For but that. music, too, though. You know, your music is good. I saw the video. The la- <laughs> la- last, I don't know. Is that the last video you just did? Well, I did a, I did a, an experiment with a live stream where I'm trying to do uh, just the sort of green screen of me. I got 17 of me in the band uh, <laughs> with a, like a video, a, like a sort of a rock music video playing in the background because I Is just find it a little pompous to look at just five of me. So I made my guys really small. And then I put a big video in the background, yeah. like rock and roll yeah. stuff. Yeah, I just we're watching that to that, George. Yeah. Highly experimental, though. It's like, like you can still see like the clips holding the green screen, like appearing in the wrong places. And stuff. <laughs> it's like, uh, I got to fix that. But uh, again, like I said before, I don't care. Just go make mistakes. Do it. Yeah. And that's, that's how you learn. And, you know, but Twitch it's is going to come. Like it's going to come. It's going to get better. <laughs> we don't you know, when we play out, that's the difference, too. We play out. We have a song list. We know what we're going to play. So right, it's right. there. But when Twitch, they're telling you what they want to hear. So they got over 100 songs yeah. and maybe some <laughs> we haven't played before. But I mean, for a while. For a long time, yeah. yeah. But the whole thing is, is to understand that they really don't care that you have uh, exactly. maybe a slip up or you, a, a faux pas. You know, it, you, you can just be honest about it and. You know, I see. have so many favorite moments of watching you guys in the very few streams that I've seen because I haven't seen many. I've only ca- I only discovered you guys recently, so I have a lot of catching up to do. But one of my favorite moments, and it may not be what you expect, that uh, one of the requests came up, and Sandy, you were very professionally saying, "Oh, well, that looks like a lovely song," and I could tell there was like some kind of not, <laughs> not worry, but just like hmm. And you looked at George and. He politely just sort of, you know, ribbing him. Are you sure you remember that one, George? And George was like, I'll figure it out. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. <laughs> and he, and he's, that's when he's starting to look at you like, what are you playing? And then you're going and George masterfully, you know, sort of faked his way through it. It sounded wonderful. And yes. like Enzo and I always say, no one cares. No one notices the little <laughs> tiny artistic mistakes. You know, like, but George, respectfully, you didn't know the song, but you faked it like you did it so well. And then Sandy, at the end, you said... Well, I think we're going to maybe remove that one from the set list. That's <laughs> but it was so elegant and, and the stream is going crazy. Yeah. And it claps and the cheers and the <laughs> of applause. And everyone loved it. And I'm just laughing like, oh, my God, these guys are fantastic. They're so good. Don't stop this show. Never quit halfway. Keep on going. Muscle through. And it was just awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> Pardon me. So let me ask you this, guys. I mean, as if you aren't doing enough. I mean, in your copious free time, can you, you know? Uh, figure out another project to add on, but what are your time travel? Time, time travel. travel. That's your next project. Right. Time travel. Sort of sort that one out for us. We'd really appreciate yeah, that. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> <laughs> what current projects are you guys working on, or maybe things in the works that are going to come out eventually that you would like to maybe let people know about? Well, I think you know one thing is we are we are going to go on the road, uh, and we want to do it in a way where we can continue to do our Twitch stream. So that's one thing that we still have to figure out. Uh, but we've got the the studio that we've pretty much put together as a studio, a rural studio, maybe you might want to call it, okay. that we could take out. So we're working on that. Um, we're, we're always working on music in our county because we're, we're sort of leaders of mu- music here and people come to us. So we're always looking for opportunities mm-hmm. to expand our music here. Right. And we do want to do some videos. We really want to do some videos. Cool. And that's another thing we've got. And our Twitch channel is really important to us. Yeah. You know, really well, is. And it, you know, the other thing that it d- does for us is that typically we would pl- play a lot during the summer. And then we wouldn't have any gigs in the winter at all. As I said, it's a right. very seasonal economy here. And then in in spring, we'd go out and play, and we'd forgotten half of our stuff. Yeah. Now, <laughs> we can walk into some place and just hit the ground running. You said you to know, go. Because we're always playing on Twitch. Yeah, Twitch keeps you real so. flex. You yeah, know, it's awesome. it's, yeah. it's great for the rep for for uh, recency of all of the material, but not only that. I mean, I, and we've had this conversation with a few other artists that have been on the show and in just in our in our personal circle. You know, that are on Twitch or they're online some way, shape, or form. Not necessarily Twitch, but they're just they're on social media. 
in a very, very serious way, more than they've ever been before, mostly because of pandemic. And that question comes up, like, what are you going to do when things go back to normal? Because you have an incredible following, as you guys do, so much support and community around what you're doing. It would be such a shame to see that change or disappear because we're going to go play Taco Tuesdays. We can't stream. You know, I mean, it would be I, I just I would hate to hear the words we're not yeah. streaming anymore from oh, you guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it would just yeah. well, I don't think you hear that, but yeah. there may have to be some adjustments going forward. What do you mean? Well, <laughs> uh -oh. since I have three boats to oh. build <laughs> to, <laughs> to be playing music so seven nights a week may not work out. Well, no, but we're but we're not gonna quit doing our Twitch. Yeah. You know, Sunday, right. Tuesday, Thursday. That's yeah. that's in stone, isn't it? <laughs> well, pretty much or it certainly has been. Yeah, but I mean we've never you know, there may have to be some well, tweaks, but we're not leaving Twitch. Yeah. It's been too good to us. Yeah, it really is good I to mean, us. It there's a nice little income stream from it. But the biggest thing is this uh, society that's on there. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe it. And, you know, the design of Twitch is, is pretty brilliant. The whole yes. raid thing. I would agree. I, I don't agree. know who it's came brilliant. up with that idea, but that's... That's the supercharger for yeah. Twitch. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? Eh? How that community yeah. that you know it, that you're encouraged to build as a content creator, they give you all these little tools to say, well, if mm -hmm. you want to do this and that and whatever, and right. you know, start and then when a little bit of outflow of cash comes out from you as the initial fledgling channel, you think, wait a second, why am I putting 10, 15, 20 dollars in? But it's the kind of investment that truly comes back to you, oh, yeah. buying mm -hmm. bits for a channel and they yeah. buy bits back for you, you know, gifting yeah. a sub and then you gift, you're getting, you know, all kinds of yeah. subscriptions to channels like what I, all I did was follow them. And suddenly I'm, I'm involved with the community and it's just a lovely yeah. system. I really think it's great. It's a little bit like a video game meets social yeah. media. Uh, and with other tools for development and becoming an affiliate so quickly and then becoming a partner, which is obviously, you know, the end goal, uh, it's it's not beyond you guys. I mean, it, you know, the, the, one of the best content on Twitch for sure is you guys are showing how it's supposed to be done. And I think the community is just, you know, just responding to that. That's all they're doing. They're saying, look at you guys. You're what we want. <laughs> yeah, they've Don't been go just away, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? we've but, been blown away. Yeah, you know, and the thing is, you get a relationship with other streamers. Yes, and and it's sort of you scratch each other's back. Well, that that's like all well and good, uh, you know, on an interpersonal level. But what you're doing is you're bringing two clouds of people together. Exactly, and and that's where uh, the whole thing is leveraged so much in term for connection. I think it's I mean brilliant. And George, you know, when we first started out, you know, he, he I, I pulled him, you know, I pulled him. And so, you know, and he was good about it because it's hard to believe that I'd be skeptical. I know. <laughs> but, so anyway, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But anyway, so I just, you know, no, no, come on. It's just, oh, well, let's do it. Let's try it because we awesome. want to play music anyway. So he would hardly talk. You know, and he was like, well, you know, there's this this light here. I, you know, he, you know, I was fine with it because of my background, but George was really <laughs> like struggling. But with I never had a radio show. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it did not take long before he got it and he just went for it. Yeah. And then he started loving it. And he loves it as much as I do. And in fact, it's kind of embarrassing because our friends don't get this. You know, you'll know. <laughs> right. They yeah. just don't get it. Yeah. You know, and George will go, God, we got raided last night. <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh, honey, please don't. <laughs> You, know, you guys then, are cooler go, than half the parents the, of my, my kid's school. I can tell you <laughs> well, half is an insult. Three quarters, 80% at least, at least. I told Enzo this story a while back. I said, I remember going to pick up my girls one day at school and they come running out and a few of their friends, these are, you know, nine, 10 year old kids. <sighs> Hey, you're Cassidy's dad. You're on TikTok. I saw your TikTok, you know, but you swear in that one. I don't know. I, I don't like that. I'm like, I, I'm <laughs> Don't listen to those ones where I swear. I'm sorry about that. And I asked my kids, I said, they, they know I'm on TikTok. Yeah, we tell everyone that you're on TikTok. <laughs> and then the parents are coming over and they're saying, what the heck is TikTok? What is that? <laughs> and I'm hanging out with the kids and we all look, me and the kids at the parent and go, 
ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, moving on. Oh, so, but yeah. yours are so funny. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm and glad so you are, think so. My girls uh, don't think so. Oh, well, <laughs> they give me this oh yeah, laugh. they are. And yeah. so are you doing anything like that? Uh, not like Paul, no little things. Uh, I no, I'm not like you. I mean, you put a lot of time and effort into the, the, wow. the social media. <laughs> I, I, I started off by the first um, account that I had was to push our old band. So I wanted to get that material out and done and out of the way, and, and set up something for the future for that band. And now I'm starting to work on my own stuff, like yeah. little things. But it's. Um, I mean, there's days where like, like today I worked down here in the studio working on stuff and there's sometimes it goes by like three weeks. I don't pick up a guitar because it's just like, I just can't. So yeah. again, I have oh, no yeah. schedule. There's no, whatever happens, happens. So I'm, I, I, you know, I'm following his coattails and I'm just hanging on for the ride. So are you <laughs> thinking about doing a music stream? Maybe. Mm, I don't know. Maybe one day, like you've dragged we'll George into Twitch. I'm trying to drag yeah, him. Exactly. Enzo came up to me, he, he texted me the other day. He says, You know what? I just saw there's some crazy guy on Twitch. He says, I gotta get back in, I gotta get into Twitch. You gotta learn about all this. You're talking about Twitch all the time. There's some crazy guy. <laughs> no, let's be honest. He said, There's some crazy bastard that's doing a 12 hour stream on freaking <laughs> Twitch. And now, my answer to him was, Enzo, we're gonna do that one day. And he goes, that's it. I'm out here. That's easy. It's like <laughs> hung up on me. It, it, yeah, they incredible. are some crazies. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. You, like, have 12 you... hours. You're going to amputate my freaking leg. Where are you going? Oh, I, know. <laughs> I, did, I mean, we did. Someone did a 24 hour stream. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar with TLNA, the late night alternative? I don't you know. know. I'd I'm like you guys to take a look at them. They are. We, cool. we love them. <laughs> you, be in bed. you should be in bed. Oh, <laughs> that might be a Donaziano. It for, is. As uh, per tradition, I buy you a pizza. Who's, who, bought, who bought us pizza? We're having large. Uh, I'm, joking, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Lonely God. Oh, 20 best. quid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, that buys my pizza. Catherine will call. I'll get to have a I'm snip joking, of it. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. We've actually. been on their show, and we do love what they do. They're right. an old Radio UK late during the night late, show. Late oh, night cool. radio. Okay, okay. Right on. Cool. Cool. Kind of yeah. edgy stuff. Very edgy. Uh, right on. But it's this man and a woman. They're not, They're not a couple. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just check them out. TLNA. Tlna and, it's uh, it's in the notes i will definitely yeah. check that out for sure you, that's you, awesome and like you say the community is just so fun because you discover incredible people i i uh i, I caught uh this uh, this lonesome haggard looking guitarist the other night uh kate <laughs> uh, awesome. Cade puckett i think is his name Cade puckett and i was just blown away my dad was a carpenter but he was also a jazz guitarist so i grew up hearing this the dulcet sounds of jazz oh. guitar coming from the basement oh. of our of our of my childhood home and so when I happened on his stream, he was terribly lit and he had all kinds of weird stuff looking, you know, hanging from the back, like, you know, and on it. And I just take a closer look and the, the incredible musicianship of his fingers. Like, oh. A poor man's made out of muscle and blood. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
There's yeah. no doubt in my mind about that. Absolutely. We are yeah. in your fan Isn't club. Isn't this fun? Just can't wait to see all, right. all of the wonderful things that you do. If all you're right. taking that mobile studio and you're doing live streams from who knows down the coast or up the mountain, who yeah, knows what, I would not awesome be surprised. Trip, yeah. Showing us all how it's done. Well, we did. Yeah, talk- we could do a Twitch tour. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many other musicians that we say. Oh my God, I'd love yeah. to play I mean, with that. You guys you know? could, you know, you could do yours here in our studio. I mean, <laughs> that, so you know, would that be cool? You know, on the road, you know, you You're know, amazing. you could stop at different places. Right. But, you know, I didn't, right. we didn't talk about it, and so we don't have to talk about it. But George and I have been going to Jordan. I've been going many years. Right. But, okay. Cool. But we do for film locations. Oh, and right that, on. and for Bubble Fett and for Star Wars, because there's nice. a lot of them. Yeah, so yeah. that will be a, a, a one someday we could talk about because we have a lot of film from that. That would be so cool. There's yeah. so many things that we could discuss. Honestly, like, I mean, there's just lots of topics to follow. But at one point, we're sort of wrapping this one up. But with the promise of, and Enzo and I have alluded to this, we're finding ways to in, uh, sort of in, initiate discussions. Bring with, back. Previous guests of the show, not necessarily full episodes of interviews, but just sort of like a check in to see oh, yeah. Yeah. when How's you've got going? something new to talk about. It's like, hey, Tebow, you know, we're doing this and we're, we're, we're trying to hit up all of these different places to sort of help, you know, promote it. We are there. We are there to hear about all of the cool projects that you're going to be working on well, in the future. Even, and and promote it or not, know. it's just to, you know, because also just to hang out. Cool, really. just to hear what's going on. And yeah. Then if you miss like some, a phone call, but we're we sharing the phone call. We should have a beer together. We should <laughs> have beer exactly, in front exactly. of us. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. I have a feeling that that's going to happen probably sooner than. Yeah, uh, Montreal's you know, not that far. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, we're, and we're opening up finally. We're, yeah, we're it's out getting of the red, there. out of the orange. We're I think we're yellow, yellow or yellow. something like yellow. that. There's no more curfew. And What's the situation? The border is still not open, though, is it? Between no. provinces, it's opened up. but it just uh, opened it. You know, between the states and Canada, no. It's not. But, yeah, yeah, unless no, you're uh, essential services or workers right. or whatever. But right. yeah. Essential travel only. But it's getting yeah. there. It's getting yeah. there. I, I'm a little bit of a hermit. I don't really enjoy hanging out with people. So it's a good thing. I don't mind. Pandemic suits my personality perfectly. Yeah, us too, really. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're pretty happy. Uh, but 75% of our, our people in this county have been vaccinated. Right. That's wonderful. That's, that's a good pretty sign. high. It's yeah. the highest yeah. in Michigan. Bo- yeah. Both shots. Both shots. Yeah. yeah. Both shots. That's awesome. Cool. That's we're, we're there. We got our first. We're, we're, we're going to get our second in a month. Oh, down. I hope it goes easy for you. It went easy. So easy. Yeah. We streamed that night. Oh, really? Three nights of music. Awesome. Right. That first night and second and yeah. third. Yeah. You idea. had no side effects. No, no. no. We did Pfizer. Very minor. Yeah, ones, Pfizer. But... Uh, no, yeah, Pfizer. I got Pfizer. Pfizer. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same here. Yeah. Right yeah. I mean, the arm hurt a little but bit. There's but there's no, there's no telling person to person. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. You friends of ours, let's say they, they had a fever for 18 hours. You know. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. That happened same to my uh, shot. My, my sister-in-law, I think it was that actually had the fever. I, I believe so. Yeah. My wife, really? I, I, yeah. yeah. Me, it was the arm. It was literally, it was just the arm was like, holy yeah. shit, that's yeah, really you sensitive. Feel it. You knew where the shot was exactly. You. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 it, was it was like a knee, you know? <laughs> you had a ball peen yeah. hammer right in the middle of the shoulder. Oh, yeah. that's the spot. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, there's some people that are going around saying that, Oh, they had no problem with the first one, but the second one, second one yeah. laid them out for yeah. a day. Yeah, that's that what too. they're saying right. here too. Yeah, yeah. we got it's very lucky. Whatever. I hope Listen. you're on. Who well, cares? That's, that's where single malt whiskey comes into play, right? and yes. Uh, yes. you know, sort of deaden that with a little bit of a uh, little um, libation yeah, yeah. assistance, right? <laughs> yeah, that usually does right. the trick. Right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up with. Okay. We're sincere there. thanks <laughs> you guys are freaking awesome thank you so exactly. much for being on our show we could do so much more for the last question that we need to ask you though before we let you go is we have to ask you where can people find you where would you like people to find you online ah where would you and you find? don't have to worry about the actual urls because i'll put those in the descriptions right. but if you just tell us the platforms where well, would you like I, to send people to go and discover you all guys music well, yeah all music considered.com and then that's that can be a sort of hub for where, you know, the first, that will always have pointers to wherever yeah, we have. The home page has Twitch yeah. on it and home page right. has our outdoors and indoors. Yeah. And so the great thing about cool. your website is that it's got a wonderful story about the both of you and yeah. your earnest beginnings on how everything came to be. And of course, links to the Twitch, which we definitely want people, if you don't oh, already yeah. follow or subscribe all music considered on Twitch, do yourselves the favor, please. Aww. 
Trust me on this. Enzo and I, we strongly recommend that you go and discover the best content that you're going to find on Twitch, hands down, for sure. Sandy and George rocking it out three times a week, if not more, depending on the week, uh, in between making sure that the boats are under control and that your various (laughs) projects and uh, entrepreneurial endeavors are uh, taken care of. Sandy and George, your absolute inspirations. Thank you for being on the show. Enzo, thank you for making time as always. I love you, brother. Appreciate you so much. And guys, it's not the last time we'll be talking. I have every every intention of harassing you guys again in the future. So we'll be talking again soon. (laughs) 